Welcome everybody to Bishop Eden for this Mass on the 24th Sunday of the year. And one of the things I'd like to do straight away is welcome back Brother James from his travels. So hopefully we'll have a, a little bit of harmony in some of the music this afternoon. We're going to begin with the hymn, God Forgave My Sin. And we're just going to sing a couple of verses to begin with. But before we do that, um, I'd like to give people a chance to look that up if they've got um, a, a way of doing it their iPads or on a hymn book that they've got. Um, just to introduce the Mass today, rather leading on from last week when we were thinking about resolving conflict, this week we're thinking about forgiveness and obviously the two things are very closely associated, learning how to cope with the things that make life difficult between people and even between nations and then learning to forgive and move on. Now. One of the things you might be inclined to ask in you when you hear today's readings is, well, that's an extraordinary story for Jesus to tell. Do really pe people really behave like that? Um, are people so insensitive? Well, I think we know that they can be, and they are. And as you know, I always like to introduce Freddie Freckles at the beginning of the Mass. So I want to tell the children that Freddie learned a very important lesson when he was a very little boy, and it's stuck in his mind for the rest of his life. He remembered one day at the end of Sunday dinner, there was a little bit of sweet left at the end, and his sister Susie said, Mummy, can I have that last bit of pudding, please? And his mum said, yes, certainly, Susie, of course you may. And Freddie suddenly thought, I want it. And he said, I wanted that. And he started stamping his foot, and his mum said, Freddie, please. Susie asked very nicely if she could have it. And you often get extra portions. And Susie's always giving way to you. No, Susie's going to have it today. And he got very angry. And he wouldn't speak to anybody most of the afternoon. And eventually his mum went and had a chat with him. And reminded him that that was, even young as he was, he had to learn not to be so selfish. That sometimes other people might like what we want. And are entitled to have it. And it's when we try to make sure that the other person's happy that we can become happy. And if we're going to go through life stamping our feet because we don't get everything we want, then we're going to be very unhappy and very selfish people. And Freddie eventually thought about that and he knew that his mum was right. And he wasn't always unselfish, but it was an important lesson that he learned when he was very young. So when you listen to the readings today, the Old Testament reading is really leading us to what Jesus is going to tell us. Remember that Jesus understood human nature very well. He knows how selfish we can be and how insensitive we can be and how we therefore can make other people's lives very painful. Today we'll begin our Mass as usual, asking the Lord to forgive us. And we're going to sing that hymn, God Forgave My Sins, as an opening hymn. God forgive my sin, in Jesus' name, I've been born again, in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you, to share his love as he told me to. He said, freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. All power is in, in Jesus' name, in earth and heaven, in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his power as he told me to. He said, freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name and because you believe, Others will know that I live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
So let's pause for a moment and let's freely give forgiveness to those who have offended us so that we can receive the freedom that God wants to give for us and to us by forgiving us our sins. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O Lord, creator and ru ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Resentment and anger, these are foul things, and both are found with the sinner. He who exacts vengeance will experience the vengeance of the Lord, who keeps strict account of sin. Forgive your neighbour the hurt he does you, and when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. If a man nurses anger against another, can he then demand compassion from the Lord? Showing no pity for a man like himself, can he then plead for his own sins? Mere creature of flesh, he cherishes resentment. Who will forgive him his sins? Remember the last things and stop hating. Remember dissolution and death, and live by the commandments. Remember the commandments, and do not bear your neighbour ill will. Remember the covenant of the Most High, and overlook the offence. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, the Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. My soul give thanks to the Lord, all my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. It is he who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. His wrath will come to an end, he will not be angry forever. 
He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. The second reading is from St Paul's letter to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So that, alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me, as often as seven times? Jesus answered, Not seven, I tell you, but seventy-seven times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed 10,000 talents, but he had no means of paying. So his master gave orders that he should be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, to meet the debt. At this, the servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time, he said, and I will pay the whole sum. And the servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancelled the debt. Now, as this servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owed him one hundred denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him, you wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my heavenly Father will deal with you, unless you each forgive your brother from your heart. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Okay, well, I don't think we really need much of a homily. The story, I hope, speaks for itself, and I hope the way I introduced it just got you thinking. In a sense, it seems such an extraordinary story to us, it's hard to imagine. We'd have to be very hard-hearted to have behaved like that man. But that is the problem, of course. If we harden our hearts, then... Not even God can get near us. And I suppose that's what Jesus was saying. At the end, you destroy yourself. It's not that God wants us to be destroyed. You know, when Peter says, Lord, how many times must I forgive? He thought seven was a terrific number. Uh, I think there were certain situations in the Old Testament where you could go up to three. So I, I guess that 
Peter was thinking to himself, well, if I go up to seven, um, and surely that must be uh, as much as could be expected of any of us. And what does Jesus say? There's no limit. 77 times. I've heard that once translated as 70 times seven. And if you're good at mathematics, you can work out what that would be. I think that's 490, isn't it? But anyway, if it's not, um, so be it. But anyway, do you get the message? Well, I hope I do. I've often thought about these stories, and sometimes, as I say, you think to yourself, why did Jesus need to tell that story? Well, I think we all know that there is a selfish side to us. Let's pray today that we will be generous, that we will be giving, that we will be forgiving. And if we are, we'll continue to make this a better world. So now, in that spirit, shall we make our act of faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As always, we join our prayers of intercession with those praying throughout the world this weekend. We pray with Pope Francis and Archbishop Malcolm that the Lord will continue to strengthen them in their ministry of service to the Church. We pray for those troubled parts of the world where there is still so much selfishness, so much greed, so much intolerance, which often leads to great oppression and violence. Lord, we ask that people may be free, free to live in love and service of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's remember those people who've asked us to pray for them. We've been praying for a number of people for whom we've been asked to pray who are ill, so just to mention their names again, some of them anyway. Ninette, the little babies, Nola and Lucy, Bernadette and Caroline, and Mick Dunn, who's now in a hospice, Julia Barton, Mike Doyle. I'd like you to remember especially Ted Bouvier, um, his wife Teresa um, sent me a note to say that he's having a very serious operation in the coming days. So I'd ask you please to remember him and to pray that it will be a complete success. And of course, I'd like you to continue to pray for Father Andrew. Um, I say like, like you to continue. I did mention Father Andrew on uh, my Thursday message. Unfortunately, he was unable to have his treatment last Tuesday. Um, and he's got a touch of pneumonia, is the way they put it. But uh, So he's in hospital at the moment with oxygen and antibiotics. Um, but sending cheerful messages to me each day. And uh, we're getting things across to him that he needs. So do pray that he will quickly recover and be able to continue his treatment. Lord, we remember all those people who are in need of our prayers, especially in our parishes. Comfort and strengthen them in their sickness. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Can we pray for a couple of people who've died recently? Eileen Northall, um, whom I was able to anoint, uh, and also Kevin Quayle. We'd also remember those whose anniversaries occur at this time. There's Babs King on the 13th, Bernard O'Sullivan on the 16th, Sue Hunt on the 18th, uh, and a birthday anniversary of Jennifer Chong on the 18th. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Amen. We'll ask Our Lady to join us in our prayers, and perhaps to continue to ask Our Lady's prayers for our children and our teachers and all our schools. Um, and perhaps we could remember, especially Brother James, he's been working hard with his brothers in the opening of a new school down in Southampton, which began the Thursday before last, so we continue to ask God's blessing on that venture. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And we'll conclude our prayer with this prayer of Pope Francis, which we've been using each week. You, salvation of your people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Dear Heavenly Mother, help us to live these difficult days filled with hope, with renewed unity, with a true spirit of obedience to what is required of us, with the certainty that after this trial, we may arrive at the blessed and glorious hour of the resurrection. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favour on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ who is our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and, domin and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross, for by your cross, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection,
resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and followed by divine teaching, we rejoice and we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Before I receive Holy Communion, I'd like to pray with you the spiritual communion for those of you who are not able to get to Mass still at this time. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in Holy Communion. I love you and would love to receive you now, but since this is not possible, please come to me and fill me with all the blessings and graces I need to cope with everything that is going on. Unite us all and give us the peace which you promised only you can give. just to help our meditation at this time we'll just sing the words Jesus I love you you are my Lord Jesus. 
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, as always, thank you for joining us in this celebration. and. Uh, it is encouraging. I love to think that it's keeping us still all united. I know quite a few people are managing to get to Mass from time to time, and that's lovely, and I hope um, when you feel ready uh, and able to come out that we'll, we'll see you at Mass. Remember, um, Sunday is, is not back in place in, in the way it was in the past. Obviously, it's still a special day for us as the friends of Jesus. Um, but there's no question of, of having to get to Mass on a Sunday. One or two people are still asking me about that. Um, and uh, it, it is, uh, I'm conscious that last Sunday, for example, we were a bit overflowing at the 9.30 here at Bishop Eden. I think part of that may be because of the communions at St Mary's. So tomorrow is the last big communion day at St Mary's where we've got to reserve it just for First Communion. Uh, and after that, hopefully, we can spread ourselves a bit more and remember that the other Masses that are on during the week. This week, I've got a lot of special redemptress meetings with the North European provinces throughout each morning. So Father Michael Hennessy has kindly agreed to do the two morning Masses, so he'll be doing the 11 o'clock here at Bishop Eaton on Monday, and the 12 o'clock uh, at St Mary's on Thursday, so I'm very grateful for that. Uh, otherwise, we'll continue with the programme as it's been. Um, I also mentioned the other day, at the end of uh, the Mass, I think it was on Friday evening, I just uh, decided to go into children's television now, after all these broadcast Masses and so on. So I did record something for the junior's children, in, in our three primary schools, uh, Carlton House, Bishop Eaton and Much Walton. Um, and I gather they have been shown, because Margie's able to see exactly how many times it's been used and so on, so it looks as if all the classes have already shared those. So thank you very much uh, for the schools, and indeed for the odd word of encouragement that's come back already. So thank you for that, and I will prepare something for the, for the infants this week. Um, Otherwise, just to say that hopefully we, at the last Sunday of the month here in Bishop Eaton on this Sunday evening, we're going to receive those who should have been received at Easter into the church and baptise those who need baptism. And likewise, on the first Sunday of October uh, at St Mary's, we will have a similar ceremony. Remember, all the ceremonies are kept really short and focused these days, um, so they, they won't be terribly long. Uh, celebrations, if you want to come to Mass on those days, there's no problem. At least I hope there won't be. Uh, you know, obviously, if we do reach capacity, then we do have to, especially with these new stringent uh, problems arise or, or uh, protocols being introduced now, um, uh, we are going to be needing to follow faithfully what, what the guidance comes through to us from the government and from the church. But we will do that. Okay, I think that's all the news for the time being. Um, have a good week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. And why don't we just sing the last verse of Freely, Freely. God gives us life in Jesus' name. He lives in us in Jesus' name. 
and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his peace as he told me to. He said, freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name and because you believe, others will know that I live.